I'm not going to try to manipulate you to believe that I'm better than anybody else. I know that I am. I know that I'm the prize. Men often tell women that if they want equal rights, then they should be prepared to split the cost of a date. This is a myopic and erroneous view of what justice for women looks like, and I think it's almost always intentionally manipulative. Yo, what is going on, guys? I hope you are all doing well. So on today's episode, we are going to be covering a hilarious video from a fellow Fiend Gang content creator, Lock the Bounty Hunter, titled Empowered Woman Gets Destroyed by the Wall. But in this video in particular, there is a clip that we will be starting at of a feminist basically getting pissed off because men are asking her to split the bill. She says, you know, it's not fair, blah, blah, blah. And she complains because this isn't what equality is supposed to be about. You know, I want it to be equal in other things uh, where she gets the advantage. So this is just yet another womanist complaining when she actually gets treated like she asked to be treated. So without further ado, let's jump right in. Guys, don't forget to leave your thoughts and your comments. A creator recently made a video saying that their bad feminist take is that they want men to foot the bill on a date and their stitches are off but I can tag them below. I don't think this want is anti-feminist. Men often tell women that if they want equal rights then they should be prepared to split the cost of a date. This is a myopic and erroneous view of what justice for women looks like and I think it's almost always intentionally manipulative. <laughs> So let me get this straight. Even though feminism is a nonsense philosophy that demands equality between men and women in every single aspect of life, that somehow doesn't include dating? No, sorry woman, your extreme ideology isn't an all-you-can-eat Chinese buffet. Yeah, see, a lot of these women who claim to be about equality lose their mind over this crap because it's not actually about equality. It's about having power over other people, specifically men right by claiming oh we're oppressed we need reparations we need this we need that right it's all about equality quote unquote i say this every time it's all about equality until a bill comes or until a fight starts okay when a bill comes or a fight starts in other words when reality hits now we need a man to foot the bill right we need a man to lay down his life we need a man to lay down his wallet because it was never actually about equality for women. Womanism is not a movement for women, mind you. This is something that incredibly does incredible damage, excuse me, to women, specifically women who want to have families and who want to, you know, have a lifestyle outside of working until you're 60 for some boss that doesn't care about you. Womanism is not something that cares about women. It is not something that cares about equality. And this is absolutely hilarious that you have women complaining, saying that they're feminists, but then complaining when a man doesn't split the bill, uh, when a man doesn't pay the bill for them. I'm sorry, I thought you were strong and independent, madam. You can't just take what you want and leave the rest. It is a heaping bowl of weak old stew. No matter what's in it, it's rotten, worthless, and makes you completely sick and disgusting if you try to consume it. You wanted equality. That means paying your fair share. That isn't manipulative. Those are the rules that you set. It's literally the foundation of your cultist argument. Now, in reality, we all know the truth. Feminism isn't about equality. It's about preferential treatment. But you already have an overtly long and seemingly complicated explanation all ready to exit out of your munch factory so let's hear it what this communicates especially if he's asked her on a first date is that women need to give more to men they need to relinquish more in a world where they already have less sexual financial and political power and this man on the date still benefits from patriarchy and capitalism you, you don't know what words mean do you really you're playing the oppression card all right fine let's go there you're sporting a decrepit septic take of putrid melancholy you you have nothing but the home plate advantage in every single aspect of your life in the government, the workplace, romance, and society in general. You get to play life on easy mode. The law, society, and Western governments all over the world are on your side. You are not oppressed. Don't you dare mention Supreme Court cases that you don't understand. Don't mention things that happened to women a hundred years ago. Don't mention payroll conspiracies that have been thoroughly debunked, or that one time a fat guy whistled at you as you walked past him. You you have never suffered any form of oppression in your life. I 100% agree with Locke here, okay? The women who are making these videos, and I say this often, are literally the most privileged group of individuals and protected to ever walk the face of the earth. 
This woman is recording this on a damn iPhone, for goodness sake. Probably, you know, made by men. And we're complaining about being oppressed and about how hard things are. A man's life is significantly more difficult than a woman's. I don't care what you say. And yes, there might be more politicians that are men. I don't know. I haven't really looked into it. Okay. But to claim that women are disadvantaged, especially in the sexual marketplace, and this is your rationalization for men should have to pay for me, get out of here. Get absolutely out of here. And I love the way she starts this absolute nonsense. Let's go back here for a moment, okay? This woman is off her complete rocker. This is why you don't date women like this, by the way. They've always, they always have to have an oppressor so that they can avoid any accountability whatsoever. Let's listen to this again. Especially if he's asked her on a first date, is that women need to give more to men. They need to relinquish more in a world where they already have less sexual, financial, and political power. Oh, brother, this guy stinks! Have you guys noticed that some of my videos have gone missing over here on YouTube? That is because I am slowly moving them over to locals where I can actually host them without the risk of getting in trouble. If you are not aware, many creators are starting to move over to places like locals, rumble, etc. Because YouTube is not really a free speech platform. So if you are interested in supporting the channel and getting access to videos that are no longer available here, make sure that you come and join us over on Locals. The link will be in the video description down below. Supporters get access to their own exclusive videos that are no longer available to the public. So make sure you go to the link in the description and join us over there now. But anyway, guys, back to today's episode. Yeah, see, what happened to equality? What happened to equality? Men are just asking you to pay your fair share. I thought you were about fair treatment. I thought you were about equal treatment. But no, of course not, right? It's a, now we're complaining about how men are asking us to relinquish power. Oh, what? You can't go halves in the date? Also, guys, this is an argument that I see. Tr they, they try and slip this in every single time. And it, it drives me crazy because it's so completely stupid. A lot of these women have the logic that, well, whoever asks has to pay. Right? So whoever asks for the date has to pay. Right? So let's think about that for a second. If I, if I go out with my mates, if I go out with my friends and I say, hey guys, you know, want to catch a movie or want to go out for some food or, or like a, a music event or something like this, right? If I say that to my friends, am I supposed to pay because I invited them? No. Everybody pays their fair share, right? But for some reason, when we come to dates, oh, whoever asks has to pay, right? Wh whoever asks has to pay. This makes absolutely no sense. What you're essentially saying is men have to pay because I'm the woman, but with extra steps. Okay, so it's, it's very funny how these non-traditional individuals try and get men to be traditional for them. You want me to pay for the date? Okay, how many dudes have you been with? Oh, what's that? More than zero? No, thanks. I'm good. Right? And this doesn't mean that men can't pay for dates, but you actually have to incentivize them and asking, you know, in such an entitled way, she's not even asking, she's demanding for men to pay for dates for her. Absolutely not. It's ridiculous. These so called strong and independent women cry on TikTok and complain when men don't pay for them. Disgusting. Absolutely disgusting. But let's keep going with the video here. I think she says a little bit more nonsense. Let's take a listen. Fin turf. The dispute isn't really about the bill, but whether one rejects a pernicious version of feminism that asks women to participate equally when they are still collectively subjugated on the basis of sex and gender. Male allies prioritize fighting the ways that patriarchy disadvantages women, not the negligible advantages it confers upon them. Probably still shared her location before the date in case he was a murderer. No offense, but it sounds like that's some fucking commie gobbledygook. All right. <laughs> <laughs> I, I love the memes that Locke puts in here, man. They're so hilarious. This woman is so brainwashed. Absolutely and utterly brainwashed. Hey, you know what? It's fine. If you want to demand that men pay for the full date because you're oppressed, have fun, right? I, I am not envious of the man who ends up with you. Any guy who ends up with you is going to pull his own hair out. I guarantee you the guy's going to go bald by the time he's 27. Co just completely and utterly. It's all going to be gone because you stress him the hell out. I don't, know, I don't know how old this woman is, but I do not envy any man who would actually take this woman seriously. I think that men who take women like this seriously lack self-respect. They need to actually get some self-respect because girls like this are clinically insane and they will make your life a living hell. Let's keep going. 
sister what you're saying isn't even remotely true and even if it was how is that guy buying you dinner fighting this patriarchy is there some sort of magic patriarchy scale that gets a little bit closer to being balanced every time a man pays for a woman's crepe suzette how many paid dinners vacations massages and loans would it take in order for you to be satisfied to the point of viewing societal equality there isn't a number because it doesn't exist and that exactly right it has to be invisible because that way we can just keep it going in perpetuity. It has to be invisible so that we can just continue to get men to do crap for us under this nonsense that doesn't even exist. These are the same women that say that they get paid a different amount, which has been illegal for a very long time, mind you. It's just, these girls just aren't even worth any time whatsoever. That's because deep down you feel like men should be taking on the traditional masculine role and pay for you. And you think your multi-syllable word somehow makes you appear intelligent. You're not intelligent. You are insufferable. All you want <laughs> is free food. And you're trying to use backwards political talking points to justify your entitlement. Well, sorry, woman. You want equality? Well, then I suggest bringing your debit card and paying for your half of the veal cutlet. And by the way, standard tip is 15%. Don't get cheap. That waitress is a victim of the patriarchy. Have you ever heard That's actually a really good point. <laughs> you know, it's it's just hilarious to me how men are expected to open their wallets and if you don't do it then you're contributing to oppression. I'm sorry guys, but like I would absolutely lose my marbles if I had to date a woman like this. I would absolutely lose it. Imagine being in a relationship or trying to date someone. These are the same women, mind you, who complain about men not committing to them. It's like you take a 15 second conversation with them and you find out instantly why no guy with self-respect wants to speak to them at all. Why am I not married? Why doesn't a self-respecting man want to have kids with me? Why won't men do this? Why won't men do that? When these women literally behave as though they're man repellent, like a physical, literal, embodied man repellent. And dudes are supposed to just whip out their wallets because we're told to. These people are insufferable. I think Locke worded it, worded it really well. These people are straight up insufferable. Let me know what you guys think in the comments. Do you think this woman is onto something? Or do you think that she just doesn't want to pay her way because she's a clown? Let me know in the comments. Right? And I don't know if you guys caught this, but we've got tattoos. We've got everything going on here. Genius. Absolute genius. I wonder if this woman's a single mother as well. Maybe, she's, maybe she was oppressed in that way too. But let's continue on to the next clip here. And this is just adding fuel to the fire of why a lot of dudes don't get into marriages or long-term relationships anymore. So here we have a woman we're going to be jumping into and she's going to be complaining about, from memory, I've only seen a brief amount of this, uh, mental baggage in a relationship. She, she has to think too much in a relationship so she's carrying too much baggage. I don't know, some, some nonsense. Let's jump in and take a listen to this. My friend asked me, why do I seem to have a disproportionate reaction sometimes to something that my husband doesn't do or doesn't do right? It's a very simple task. It's not really a big deal, but then I have such big emotions about it. Why is that? And I said, because when you are the person who is carrying the vast majority of the mental load and you are remembering all of these million tiny little simple tasks and you do a million tiny simple tasks all the time to make your life work and they can't handle a single one it can cause you to go a little i'm sorry guys but anytime a woman starts to talk this is a thumbnail picture and a half too isn't it excellent stuff i think we're going to use the other one for the thumbnail though because we spoke about her most of the time uh but what a good place to pause to talk about this for a second Anytime you hear these individuals talk about emotional load or mental load or things that are just literally intangible during a relationship, I just completely write off the video as the person being uh, in need of going to an asylum. Okay, so this woman is complaining because she bears the mental load of the relationships and she does a million different little things that allow their lives to function. You know what? I've always had the suspicion that if this woman, this is all just translation for I nag him for things, but if she went away, I think the man's life would be totally fine. I think a lot of these women overestimate how much they actually contribute, right? And, oh, I've got to do like 500 little things in a day. They overcomplicate their lives so much. They have to do like 50 different trips out to go get random garbage, right? Got to prepare for this and that and this social event and blah, blah, blah. But if you leave men to their own devices, a lot of them are actually completely fine and their lives are a lot simpler. 
you ask a lot of these dudes who have been married, right? There will be dudes in the comments who have been married before, who have gotten divorced, right? This video is a little bit long, so maybe the comments have uh, not as relevant to this particular point in the video, right? But there, I guarantee you there are dudes who watch this video that have been in marriages, they get divorced, all of their crap is taken, they get out, and their life is better. <laughs> And their life is significantly more simple because all of this mental load that this woman is carrying around is really just fancy words for I nag him. Let's keep going. Say what now, what now? If there's one concept that needs to be jettisoned into the vacuum of space, it's the mental load argument. It's this notion Agreed. that modern wives have it oh so much harder than the husbands because they're forced to constantly think harder than them. Thus implying that the husbands are mindless oafs who just get in the way of the smart, hardworking wife leader. If this sounds familiar, then that's because it was used as the benchmark for every single 1990s sitcom family. That's why I prefer to call this way of thinking the Jill Taylor syndrome. It's a convenient way to ignore everything her husband does because he's not doing her work for her. And the greatest part is that even if he does try to help out, he never helps out in what she perceives as the right way, thus setting him up for failure regardless of what he does and giving his wife justification to openly disrespect the poor guy in the public forum because every single thing he does for the household doesn't count because apparently it doesn't require thinking. Because you want to feel that your partner who is supposed to be your equal can handle remembering or doing a very simple task. That's not an obscene expectation to have. That's what you're really mad about. It's not the forgetting to take the trash out or doing the dishes or whatever. It's the fact that you feel like you don't have an equal partner. That's why you're mad. Are you sure? Ah oh, yes, the equal partnership argument, the ultimate gripe of the modern wife. It pretty much sets up the precedent that no matter what her husband does, regardless of his intentions, if he's not taking on his responsibility as well as a substantial portion of hers, then the marriage is completely unequal and therefore warrants her openly demeaning her good husband's name. Woman I'm sorry guys, but you know, whenever I see um, these videos come online of a woman in a relationship or a marriage sitting here and then bad mouthing her partner. I always just assume that whoever is making the video or, or doing the complaining or the character attacking of the other person, I always just assume that they're the one in the wrong, right? Because no sane person is jumping on TikTok to bad mouth their partner. I don't care what issues you have with them. I don't care how you feel like the relationship is oh so unjust because you're oppressed or because he doesn't do things right or whatever. The moment you see videos like this, I always just know that the person making the video is the insane one. I have seen so many guys, right, go through situations in their life that are so ridiculously hellish, right? Lose their kids, lose their house, lose absolutely everything. And you still don't see these men posting on TikTok crying. Right, But when a woman bears the mental load, yes, mental load of a relationship, oh, it's, you know, we've got to, guys, we've got to notify everybody. Things are real hard. And oftentimes, I don't know this woman's particular situation, but oftentimes the women who are actually making these videos, uh, the, the dude is out there providing the majority of the money. And what she's really complaining about are just tasks that are just so ridiculous and stupid. You know, oh, I need to get flowers for Jeanette's birthday or I, I need to get this or that or blah, blah, blah. Oftentimes it involves just straight up spending money. I'll be honest with you. So, you know, again, these girls who talk like this and who post these TikTok videos, they're essentially holding big neon signs that say, I'm really annoying. Don't date me. And you know what? Men oblige and then men are the problem. <laughs> And just admit that you're bitter over the fact that you didn't get the fairy tale happy ending you felt like you deserved. That's all this is. Your husband could wait on you hand and foot and make sure that you want for nothing, but you'll still find a reason to complain because deep down, you deeply resent how your life turned out. Don't believe me? I'm not the one needlessly bashing my significant other on the internet for clout. Just admit that you're resentful towards your husband for not blindly obeying your orders. Now go make a turkey pot pie and suffer in silence like the rest of us. That's what I'm talking about! Guys, we've got one final clip to take a look at. And I haven't watched this one yet, um, because normally I can only tolerate a certain amount of these videos. But we're going to be taking a look at this one as well, because guys, what better way to find out some... <laughs>
some absolute nonsense about relationships and about dating than to go on to TikTok. Let's take a listen. Casey, I'm not going to sit here and prove my worth. I'm not going to try to manipulate you to believe that I'm better than anybody else. I know that I am. I know that I'm the prize. And it's not in any egotistical way. It's just, I know what I've been through. I know what I've healed. And I know what my value is. Congratulations! Well, on behalf of all self-respecting gentlemen across the cosmos, allow me to thank you for letting us know that you're not going to chase us because the feeling's mutual. Chasing you would take too much energy and would yield next to nothing in exchange for the work. One look at you and we can tell you are most certainly not a prize. You're not even on par with a lousy home game version of a 1970s game show. What exactly would we be winning? I'll tell you. An aging, self-absorbed crone who has an overinflated sense of self-worth, who can't cook, isn't friendly and thinks the subject of her shoes counts as riveting conversation. And to add insult to injury, you're relying too heavily on makeup and filters to get you through your god-awful prose. You clearly haven't healed from whatever blunders you forced upon yourself thanks to your terrible decision-making skills, because if you did, you wouldn't feel the need to tell the planet that you've moved past your trauma. You wouldn't have to. So this begs the question, what makes you so great? Because you're clearly showing nothing. <laughs> I love how all of these videos are about how I'm fantastic. I don't need to chase you or all, all of this nonsense. And all of these videos are directed at men that didn't want them. Isn't that really crazy to think about? Every single one of these videos, and by the way, just again, it's not me or Locke or an editor who is adding, adding in this piano music. This is her putting it over her own video, mind you. But all of these videos are directed towards men that didn't want them in the first place. Okay, this tells you that this woman just is out here chasing bad boys who have no interest in her whatsoever. And then we're jumping on TikTok saying, oh, I'm not going to chase you. It just looks silly. It looks embarrassing. And it looks really narcissistic. But hey, guys, you know, I'm sure she's, she's got so much wisdom to impart upon us, despite the fact that she could never even lock down a man. If you come into my life, that's a blessing. If I allow Holy narcissism. Now you the opportunity to see parts of me that I don't show everybody. That's a blessing. If I want you to be a part of my life, it's for a reason. I don't just sit here and talk to anybody. I don't waste my time because my time is precious. Wow, thank you, your highness, for, for talking to us and bestowing these words upon us. This is something I really can't tolerate with these people, is they think that their, their presence is just the Lord's gift to the earth. Right? Oh, everybody, you know, if you're in my life, it's a blessing. Like, what kind of narcissism garbage is this? Guys, we are going to be leaving today's episode there. I don't think I can handle any more. As always, remember to take care of yourselves, guys. Don't forget to leave a comment with your thoughts. And as always, I will see you all in the next one. Peace.